A few months ago, I started learning Rust, not exactly for the known benefits of the programming language, but because of the meme. In December 2023, I can confidently say it was my best decision this year, feeling like I now possess a superpower enabling me to create virtually anything. I like Rust so much that I decided to create this video as a tribute to its awesome community. It's a summary of the significant events in the Rust ecosystem this year from my perspective. 2023 was undoubtedly the year of Rust, marked by substantial adoption, fantastic showcases, incredible content creators, and even some drama. I'll highlight the most important events in these four categories. If I miss something, or you want to share your opinion, leave a comment. I'll be glad to read what you have to say. As a programming language, Rust achieving official integration into the Linux kernel is a significant milestone. Remember, C++ could never achieve this, but Rust has, signaling its unique capabilities. The most crucial adoption case in 2022 was Rust's integration into the Linux kernel. The repository facilitating this integration has seen remarkable activity throughout 2023, setting the stage for major announcements in 2024. Quantifying the number of developer teams migrating to Rust is challenging, but the positive news is that an increasing number are making the transition, extending beyond the open source community. Microsoft, as an example, has dedicated both money and time to rewrite essential core features of their business in Rust. While my appreciation for open source remains strong, the involvement of major private companies is equally vital because that means that a lot more people who want to get paid for their knowledge would be interested in learning Rust. Amazon, too, is actively investing resources to implement official Rust support for the Amazon Web Services Software Development Kit. There are many popular tools and apps out there being written in Rust. But in this video, I'd like to mention those that undoubtedly shined in 2023. None of these tools were created in 2023, but they have achieved a lot this year. Bevy, a game engine crafted in Rust, is designed for constructing both 2D and 3D games. What sets this project apart is its utilization of a custom entity component system for both engine and game logic. While not yet deemed production ready and lacking a graphic editor and some features, Bevy has made substantial progress in 2023, reaching a level where it stands as a highly capable engine. Maintainers are doing an exceptionally great job at improving it, making it possible, in my opinion, to create truly professional-looking games with some effort. So, if you are into game development and want an excuse to learn Rust, Bevy is definitely the way to go. Moreover, with the recent Unity drama causing game developers to seek open-source alternatives like Godot, Bevy has gained increased attention. And that is good for the project. More contributors mean faster releases. Then, we have SniffNet. This is a network monitoring tool that helps you easily keep track of your internet traffic. It is an open source project available on GitHub, and as you can see, it already receives a lot of support. The reason I included it in this video is that this year, the project was chosen to be sponsored by the GitHub Accelerator program. In this program, GitHub selects promising open source projects and offers its maintainers $20,000 so they can fully dedicate 10 weeks of their time to managing and growing their project. Notably, the creator even earned his master's degree with a focus on this project. The latest update indicates that it has opened doors for him to secure a full-time job as a Rust developer, which is the dream of all of us. And my favorite one. Tori is a framework that allows you to build desktop applications using Rust for the back end, but any web technology you want for the front end. This way, you can create beautiful looking apps with very high performance. When you distribute your app, the framework uses the native web engine of the target machine to render the UI. This results in a very short binary executable, which is way better than packaging and shipping an entire Chromium instance alongside your app, like Electron does. In 2023, they have also achieved a lot, and right now they are working on version 2.0, which promises a lot of improvements and the possibility to build applications for mobile devices. Tauri itself has contributed a lot to Rust adoption because it is very attractive for developers looking for Electron alternatives. This year, a lot of controversial events unfolded in the Rust community. The one that everyone, even non-Rust programmers, heard about was the Foundation drama. 
In April, the Rust Foundation shared a proposal that caused the entire community to react strongly. They were essentially attempting to enforce new trademark policies that seemed a little bit excessive. For instance, taking legal action if someone used a domain name with the word Rust in it. Additionally, they didn't want any alterations to the Rust logo, such as changing its color, proportions, or combining it with another logo. This was concerning, especially for people contributing to the community by creating articles and engaging in educational outreach, as they were not only afraid of being sued by Oracle but also by the Rust Foundation. Of course, there was a lot of exaggeration, misinformation, and misinterpretation on this topic. I won't delve into the details, but fortunately, the Rust community is amazing, and eventually, with some dialogue, things got back to normal. Well, sort of. What might surprise you, though, is that there was an even worse drama, not caused by the Foundation, but rather by this one guy on GitHub. This happened in August, when David Tilney dropped pre-compiled binaries in Surti Derive as a way to reduce the extremely high compile times caused by procedural macros, a Rust feature that Surti uses extensively. Pre-compiled binaries are not necessarily bad, but in this case, there was no way to opt out of this feature. And as if that wasn't bad enough, nobody on the entire planet could reproduce the binaries that the maintainer was shipping. The community went crazy. The reason I consider this drama to be worse than the one from the foundation is that this crate is everywhere. Every single crate I've used in the last months uses Serdi at some level. The decision of this guy could have hurt Rust adoption a lot because no software business in the entire world would trust some non-audited binary shipped in a library, or any other library that trusted that binary. Controversial things like this are not that unusual in open source. I mean, it happened with Terraform this same year. In that case, the community response was a fork. However, in this case, forking the project was a very hard decision. I'm relatively new to Rust, but I've heard in many places that in the world there are fewer than a hundred people with the experience in procedural macros advance enough to maintain a project like this. So, not everyone out there would want to become responsible of forking and maintaining a project like this. Again, fortunately for all of us, this was solved within days. The reasons behind what motivated the maintainer to do this are very interesting and even justifiable up to some point. I won't delve into that, but if you want to know more, I encourage you to read about the topic. I could mention about 10 different YouTube channels, but my top three are these. No Boilerplate, an awesome channel. This guy's voice is amazing, making his videos very satisfying and relaxing to watch. He has a lot of useful guides about how to start learning Rust. Personally, I want to thank him because his Rust videos were a very important resource in my learning process. Although he has been varying his content lately, trust me, if you didn't know about him, you have to take a look at his channel. You won't regret it, I promise. Let's get rusty. This is a classic one, so not too much to say about it. This channel covers almost everything that happens in the Rust ecosystem. Language releases, adoption news, use cases, tutorials, and virtually anything related to Rust. Faster than Lime. Now, this channel is kind of different, but trust me, every single second of content from this guy is a gold mine. When he wants to deep dive into some topic, he goes all the way down. And I'm not only speaking of technical matters, but philosophical ones as well. The cool part is that he presents it in a way that is very easy to understand. He also writes good articles that are worth reading. I was worried about him being inactive recently, but just as I started recording this, I noticed that he just uploaded a video. So buddy, I'm glad to see you back. And that's it. My 2023 summary of the Rust ecosystem. I would like to thank these guys for helping me and inspiring others to get into Rust. There is a lot more I'd like to talk about, but I'm terrible at editing videos. Also, I'm running out of characters in my 11 Labs account, so I have to end the video here. But not before thanking all of you, the community, the Rust developers, and everybody involved in this project for your help and your contributions. All of the adoption cases, impressive crates, Amazing content generated by this community have changed my life. Even the dramas and the way we have overcome them as a community have shown me that I made the right decision in 2023, and that decision was learning Rust. I recently got my degree in computer science, and I've been lucky enough to successfully introduce Rust to my work environment, right in my very first job. I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. 2023 was great for Rust, and 2024 will be even better.